All right. The other features of rational functions that we introduced in the last video are the asymptotes. And first, we're going to deal with the easier of the two, the vertical asymptotes, those dotted lines that went up and down. To find the vertical asymptotes of a rational function, of a fraction function, it's fairly simple. If you have it in reduced terms, then all you need to do is start by setting the denominator equal to zero and solve. That's basically it. That's the only step that needs to be done in order to find the vertical asymptotes. So the denominator in this case is x squared minus 9 and we're going to make that equal to zero and find out what x values make the denominator zero. So this is kind of like finding the domain. So in this case we just have x squared and a number, no x term. Um, you can do quadratic formula, you can factor if you like, uh, but probably the simplest thing to do is to just add 9 to both sides and take square roots. And we can do that because we just have an x squared. There's no x term. So x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is a nice number. It's 3. So our two vertical asymptotes are going to be x equals 3 as one asymptote. So the vertical line passing through you know, x equals 3, crossing the x-axis at 3, and the vertical line crossing the x-axis at minus 3. These are the two x-intercepts, or excuse me, uh, vertical asymptotes. The x-intercepts are found by setting the numerator equal to 0 when everything's reduced. The harder part is finding the horizontal asymptotes. And if you really want to know where all these rules come from that I'm about to give you, take calculus. To find the horizontal asymptotes, you've got to go through a series of rules. And basically we're going to be comparing the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. And there will be only one horizontal asymptote. A rational function can have multiple vertical asymptotes, but it's only going to have one horizontal or one what we'll call oblique asymptote. So we need to talk about the degree of the numerator which in this case is x squared. So the degree of x squared is 2, because the highest power on x in this expression is just 2. And the degree of the denominator. And the denominator in this running example is x squared minus 9. So the highest exponent on x that I see here is again 2. So the degree of the denominator is 2. I'm going to go through all three cases to cover all, you know, all the examples in this one video, but we're only going to fall into one particular case. If the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, which is not our case. We are not in this case. Then you have one and only one horizontal asymptote, which is x equals 0. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, 
which is the case that we're in. The degree of the top and the degree of the bottom are the same. This is for us. Then the horizontal asymptote is going to be, the only horizontal asymptote, is going to be the ratio of the leading coefficients. In other words, the leading coefficient of the numerator on top divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. And in our case, the numerator, x squared, its leading coefficient is just 1. And the same thing is true of the denominator for this example. Since there's no number, we just put a 1 in front because 1 times anything uh, does nothing. You know, it doesn't change anything. So our horizontal asymptote will be y equals 1 over 1, which is a wordy way of saying y equals 1. And then finally, it could be the case that the degree of the numerator is larger. The fraction is top-heavy, so to speak. In that case, which is not the case we're in, you're going to have an oblique, O-B-L-I-Q-U-E, asymptote where y is going to be the quotient of the numerator divided by the denominator. And that, that three-step process, or rather, three-condition process, is how you determine horizontal asymptotes. You have to compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. Which one is larger, or are they both the same? And in each case, there's a rule for how to determine whether you have a horizontal asymptote and what it is, or whether you have an oblique asymptote, which you know, I abbreviate as OA.